Hello, I'm John Hewitt, and this is FCN's Frontline Report, brought to you by Ford Education and Training. In today's top story, Ford dealers from around the country gathered in Naples, Florida, and La Jolla, California for the division's annual winter dealer meetings. In addition to reviewing sales and marketing strategies for the rest of the model year, the dealers were given the opportunity to test drive three new Ford entries scheduled for introduction in the months ahead. FCN's Ellen Akins was on the scene in Naples and files this report on the dealer's reaction to the new products. Well, the 96 SHO is the Executive Express, and you're going to experience your near luxury performance, and that's really how we want to tout this vehicle as a real image leader. What's not new at this winter meeting is the ride and drive of new products. Our dealers listened as race car driver and Ford spokesperson Gail Truez described for them some of the best features of the new Taurus SHO. An important note that you should remember is it's the lowest priced front wheel drive V8 in its class. The thing that uh, I think that we have to do a better job of. The difference this year at the winter meeting came here in the business portion of the dealer's agenda. With Ford Division General Marketing Manager Bobby Gaunt, General Sales Manager Phil Novell, and Ford Customer Service Parts and Service Marketing Manager Jerry Opera all on stage, Ford Division Vice President and General Manager Ross Roberts opened the floor to dealers. This gave both sides a chance to share best practices and some straight talk. The dealers praised the new XL2000 training center in Dearborn, but stressed it's difficult to train their entire sales staff. That's one of the things I think that you can do for us is to bring together and make those things affordable to us so that we can take advantage of, of really world-class training. Our dealers learned about the need for improved customer satisfaction ratings and how that will improve owner loyalty, something our new way of marketing, brand management, will do too. Then the differences are going to be the way you take care of your customer. And so if everybody gets equal on that also, then it comes down to brand. And so it's, it's those people who've done the best jobs of product styling and customer satisfaction, and that's when the brand will make the difference. And that's what we're trying to get to at Ford so that we, we do have a legitimate brand strategy. At least for this Ford dealer, the exchange of ideas is a place to start. So that's what we've got to look at. Something, whenever something's going one way, you've got to stop and t time out and say, well, look, let's take a look at this. There's a, there's some, there's a way to take a, a positive advantage of this. The positive advantage to change? It'll help us make headlines in 96 and beyond that Ford continues to be the sales leader. Ellen Akins reporting for FCN News. While at the winter meetings, dealers were also briefed on the new entry-level version of the Ford Taurus that will soon be joining the lineup. Here's FCN's John Fawson with that report. Effective in early April, a new G sedan model will be introduced as part of the Ford Taurus and Mercury Sable lineups. The new Taurus G model will carry a price of $18,545, including destination and delivery charges. That's $605 less than the GL model, which is the current lowest price 96 Taurus. The Sable G model is priced at $18,910, also including destination and delivery charges, and represents a $635 price difference compared to the GS model. The new G sedan models will include such Taurus and Sable standard features as dual airbags, air conditioning, flip-fold center console, AM-FM stereo radio, and a split-fold rear seat. Generally, the available options will be limited to four-wheel anti-lock brakes, AM-FM cassette radio, Micron air filter, and daytime running lights. I'm John Fawson reporting for FCN News. The G-Series will be available in white, red, gray, black, and green exterior colors. With black mirrors, accents, and moldings, and only one interior color, granite gray. It will also be available as a sedan model only. There will be no wagon. The company expects the new G to account for about 10% of all Taurus sales. Ford also announced that the new Taurus SHO will have a base price of $26,480, including destination and delivery charges. That is exactly the same price as the 1995 model, despite all the new features, including a V8 engine, as standard equipment. The SHO will be introduced on May 23rd. Ford is positioning it as an Executive Express, a near-luxury-level performance car costing thousands less than its domestic and import competitors. With the new G-Series and the zero-price increase on the SHO, Ford is working to increase the value of the new Tauruses while holding down the cost. However, that's not the only action they're taking to make the product more affordable to own. 
Here's FCN's Ellen Akins with that story. This is how every Taurus and Sable owner wants to see their vehicle. All shiny and new, not a scratch on it. But the car may end up a mess after a crash like this. And if an accident does happen, the company's making it easier on the customer's wallet to get the vehicle repaired. We uh, reduced uh, uh, 16 parts on uh, uh, very high volume um, crash parts and uh, actually reduced those 16 parts uh, by 31%, which is a very, very significant uh, price reduction. That 31% is an average. The new pricing actually brings the cost to replace a fender assembly on a new Taurus or Sable down by 44% compared to last year's model. A new rear bumper will cost a Taurus or Sable customer 30% less. Headlamps and hoods are also included in the price reductions. Ford 2000 priorities have a lot to do with the lower prices. They're a result of manufacturing efficiencies and our suppliers' efforts to cut costs. Our dealers will benefit by the lower parts prices with increased repair business. Customers will benefit too cost of ownership is, is big for people and it should be so the better off you are I mean the lower you are um, the better it is to, in the customer's mind there are a couple of reasons why the company chose the 96 Taurus and Sable for the parts price reduction first it's a new model secondly the Taurus is the best-selling car in the US and lower prices for replacement parts on such high volume vehicles ought to make a lot of customers happy Ellen Akins reporting for FCN News the company is also lowering prices on maintenance and light repair parts by 22% for the new Taurus. Those parts include alternators, condenser assemblies, and water pump assemblies. In other industry news, last month we took you to the Detroit International Auto Show for a look at some of the new products automakers will be introducing this year. Traditionally, manufacturers hold back a few products for unveiling at later shows around the country. Here's Rob Marr with a look at some of those products revealed during the Chicago Auto Show. Welcome, the new member to the SVT Club, the 1996 SVT Cobra Convertible. Well, I'm sure you'll share all of my enthusiasm, but experiences, experiencing these vehicles is believing it. But believe me, all of us that have driven these Cobras come away with a smile. SVT also revealed a new 1996 color, Mystic Paint. Only 2,000 will be built. The only color in this Mystic Paint is black, but special properties reflect various hues of color. It changes from violet to green to gold, depending upon how the light hits it. And what's truly amazing about this paint is that it contains only one pigment, black. As with other SVO units, only a few thousand of the convertibles will be made each year. And then the SVT team showed what they're working on next, but you can only see it for now on a screen. This SVT contour will be produced in limited numbers starting in spring of 1997, spring of next year. It builds upon the outstanding Ford Contour platform in the superb 2.5 liter Duratec V6. A maximum of 5,000 will be built each year. Unlike the Ford Taurus SHO, which debuts this spring with an automatic transmission, the Contour SVT will only come with a manual transmission. At the Chicago Auto Show, I'm Rob Marr, FCN News. The Chicago Show also featured the four-door Ranger concept vehicle and Ford Design's idea of what's next for the Ford Econoline concept, the Chicane, which features a Ford First, a V10 engine. And so we're going to unveil the new Ford Econoline Chicane concept vehicle. For 97, we've completely revamped the engine lineup. We will offer a total of four new gasoline engines, along with the popular Power Stroke turbo diesel engine. And all of these gas engines deliver more power and fuel efficiency than the engines they replace. The star at all of the auto shows this year was Ford's all-new F-150. Initial response to the product has been overwhelmingly favorable. Even before its public introduction, it won just about every award the industry has to offer. Both Sport Truck and Truck and Magazines named it their Truck of the Year. It won Popular Science's Best of What's New Award, Home Mechanics Best Buy Award, Motor Week's Driver's Choice Award, and was named Truck of the Year at the Detroit International Auto Show.
Recently, we took the opportunity to put it up against the Dodge Ram, and here is what we found. Approaching 20 years as America's best-selling trucks, the lasting appeal of the F-Series needs no explanation. As for the future, a closer look at the all-new 1997 F-150 shows that Ford has taken the full-size pickup to an entirely new level. We've absolutely leapfrogged ourselves as well as our competition with an absolutely outstanding ride and handling vehicle. We had a very difficult task. Our engineers, our designers, our product planners had to put together a, a vehicle that was going to be tough, rugged, uh, keep up the heritage of F-Series, but it still had to be innovative. Among the F-150's main competitors is the Dodge Ram. Our focus comparison begins with the Ram 1500 Club Cab and the F-150 Super Cab. Several features that Dodge doesn't even offer immediately stand out on the F-150, beginning with the Ford patented third door. Hinged on the rear pillar of the cab, the third door swings out a full 90 degrees, opening up to three and a half inches of additional rear seat leg room. Now, the Ford F-150 offers a 40-60 split-fold rear seat. So if I have passengers and cargo, I can accommodate them both. With, with a one-handed operation, I can open up the rear seat to give this flat load surface for cargo. If I have a lot of cargo, with another pull, I can op open up the other half of the seat. Those are all things that customers are going to be delighted with. Those are going to be things that they're going to get that they never expected to get in a vehicle and which the competition does not have. Another standard F-150 advantage is a locking rear tailgate on all models. The only tangible Ram advantage is its standard engine, a 5.2 liter V8 which produces 220 horsepower. While the F-150 comes with a standard 4.2 liter V6, it offers the most powerful standard powertrain in its class. Elsewhere, Ford wins down the line including driver and passenger airbags as a standard safety feature. There is even a passenger airbag deactivation system, standard to help protect a child in a rear-facing seat. As for cargo and payload, again, it's Ford over Dodge, with the F-150 providing an extra two and a half cubic feet of cargo space and more payload capacity, including more than 200 pounds of maximum payload in the regular cab comparison. Both vehicles went head-to-head -head in several ride-and-drive events last year. The F-150's all-new suspension and handling package was labeled an overwhelming winner by members of the media. I think it's a dramatic improvement. Uh, the biggest weak point of the old vehicle was the front suspension in our testing, and uh, this is a highly successful change. The chassis is stiffer, and dynamics are improved overall. I think the proof is, is what I spend my own money, and I think there's absolutely no doubt whatsoever I would gladly pay whatever the monthly payments are to own something like that. Payload, power, and Ford Tough performance leave the F-150 a clear cut above. For our final story today, we go back to the Chicago Auto Show for a look at customer response to the 1996 Ford Contour. And for that, here's John Fawson. The company is getting some good feedback about the Contour and Mystique. This week, customers at the Chicago Auto Show had some complimentary things to say about the car's design and price. It's in my price range. Two, for what you're going to get for the price, you get quite a bit of a car for that. And three, um, I've driven it a couple of times on a rental basis, and I've really liked it. It handles well. It's just nice. It seems to be a little more, uh, combines a little more luxury. It doesn't look as basic. It has some nice options that are standard that other uh, cars don't have. The two cars started the year on a high note, setting a January sales record with 18,300 units. In January, the Contour alone outsold the combined total of Chrysler's Cirrus, Stratus, and Breeze models. Meanwhile, Mystique surpassed individual sales of the Cirrus and Breeze. In addition, both cars were awarded by Car and Driver magazine as two of America's ten best. We like the Contour and Mystique very much because these are driver's cars, which is very unusual in a mid-priced sedan. Uh, they reflect the heritage of Ford 2000 uh, by bringing the European uh, chassis design philosophy over to America. With all these combined, the company has some good marketing potential for customers and dealers. We've uh, already taken some actions to increase the awareness of this at the dealership level with some uh, point of purchase materials and some things that the customers will be uh, readily aware of. We'll be using um, uh, testimonials like this in our communica communications platform this year. Certainly getting this kind of award is one we would put in the stable to, uh, to communicate it with. This kind of publicity can only help to keep the car's momentum going this year. 
I'm John Fawson reporting for FCN News. A reminder that these frontline report videos will be phased out this summer. Instead, you will tune in to Ford Star on the first and third Mondays of each month for the latest in product and programming information from Ford Education and Training. Hot sheet broadcasts are full of the same useful information you receive on frontline tapes. Plus, you gain the added bonus of interactivity. On each edition, a subject matter expert takes live questions and comments from the field on timely issues. Upcoming broadcasts include profiles on the new 1997 Escort and the 1996 Taurus SHO. And that's it for this month's edition of FCN's Frontline Report, brought to you by Ford Education and Training. I'm John Hewitt. Thanks for joining us.